Still Mrs. Dayton's foreman, or are you just her night watchman? Uh, trouble with my eyes, Cartwright. Just give them a rest. I'd say you're having a lot of trouble with them. I just rode up your east fence line. It's still shot through with dry rot. Lane, I told you about it three weeks ago. Why haven't you done something about it? Uh, just because you're courting with every week don't give you no right to give orders around here. It's going to be a lot easier fixing your fence than chasing stock all over the Nevada Territory. Now, why don't you worry about the widow and let me worry about the stock? I don't know what's eating you, but it's obvious you're not getting the work done around here, so why don't you just pick up your wages and move on, huh? Uh, Cartwright, why don't you go on up to the house and hold your little woman's knitting yarn for her? <laughs> or whatever it is you two do together. <laughs> Adam, this is terrible. When he wakes up, he's going to wonder who hit him with an axe handle. He's not getting the work done around, and he doesn't know how to keep a civil tongue in his head. I told him to pick up his wages and leave. Is that right, Mrs. Dayton? Mr. Cartwright running the ranch now? Get your things together. I'll have your money. Well, Adam, are you? Am I what? Are you running this ranch? Take it?
Peggy. You better go in and get ready for lunch. I want to talk to Adam. Oh, Mommy. Come on. All right, Peggy, come on. In you go. I'll give you a long ride. A real high one, all right? I'm sorry, Laurie. You should have been fired weeks ago. It happens that I don't like to fire people. Laura, I've been looking over the place. A third of your fence is down. Barn roof is in need of repair before the rains come. Stock looks as though Doc Stone hasn't taken a look at it all summer. The neglect around here is shameful. Well, you must know it takes money to replace fences and re-roof barns. I have a, a ranch payment to meet in two weeks. Let me help. If you don't get this place straightened out, Laura, you're not going to be in any shape to face the fall roundup or, or the winter. I don't want charity. Now, look, Laura. It isn't charity. It's just a loan. A business matter entirely. I conduct my business matters with Mr. Weems at the bank. Laura, when was the last time you inspected this place? You know, a ranch doesn't run itself. You gotta watch it, look after it all the time. Well, you seem to forget that I have a house to look after and a child to take care of. How much do you think a woman can do by herself? I know. I'll get you another foreman. Adam, you just don't understand, do you? Sally's mother says she wouldn't be the least bit surprised if he doesn't marry you. Well, Sally's mother is obviously being a bit premature. Adam's interest in me seems to be largely business. But if we need the fence fixed and the roof fixed and you like him and he likes you, why won't you let him help? Dear Peggy... Well, sometimes people just get a little bit mixed up. Old banker Weems had a good breakfast this morning. And no arguments with his wife. <laughs> Them bankers can stare down a rattlesnake if they ask for a loan. Well, I'm going to do my best to charm him. And if he agrees to extend my credit, you boys can start cutting the new fence post right away. I'll watch out for Peggy the rest of the day. Maybe take her horse back and if she wants. Pardon me. I'm looking for a Mrs. Frank Dayton. I'm Mrs. Dayton. Uh, this is Dave Wilkins, one of my hands. Howdy. Howdy. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm Ward Bannister, Mrs. Dayton. I was a friend of your late husband. Oh? What is it you want? Well, some months ago, Frank gave me an envelope for safekeeping. I, uh, didn't hear about his death till about a week ago. Or I'd have sent it much sooner. I see. It's a $10,000 insurance policy on Frank's life. I can hardly believe it. I had no idea. Well, it, it, it was very thoughtful of you to ride out all this way to bring it to me. Well, as it happens, I didn't come out here just for this. I'm riding on into Carson City. Oh. You don't happen to be riding into town, do you, ma'am? Yes, I am. And this will make the ride much more enjoyable. I'd like to ride along with you, if you don't mind. Well, uh, the insurance agent in San Francisco told me that he needs an affidavit and uh, several questions have got to be answered. And... Well, I can explain these questions to your lawyer, if you like. And... I would appreciate that very much. It'd be my pleasure. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, Captain. You've been so helpful, I hardly know where to begin to thank you. I don't mention it. It's my pleasure. Uh, what are your plans in Carson City? Oh, nothing special. I just thought I'd try to catch on to some ranch in the area. You hardly have the look of a ranch hand. Oh, now, these hands have done an awful lot more than deal three-card Monty, Mrs. D. Well, about the only thing ranching does for hands is grow a crop of calluses. Well, these didn't grow anything else until I was more than 20. Well, would you like to come to work for me? I'd sure like the chance. All right. Let's try it. Um, but I don't think it would be very practical to wrestle down a calf in those clothes. <laughs> you know, I agree with you. I still have some supplies to order. While I do that, you can order some work clothes. Fine. I'll walk you over to the store. I have to send a wire to a friend of mine in Carson City. He's telling me to stay on. Send this off right away, please. Keep the change. Be there in an hour, mister. Shake hands. Shake hands. If Sally Jenks pony can shake hands, you ought to be able to, you dumb old thing. Now shake hands. No, you can't have any sugar until you mind. Please shake hands. Now shake hands. Hi, Mother. Hello, Peggy. You been a good little girl? Yes, Mother. Hello. Oh, thank you. Uh, Peggy, this is Mr. Bannister. My How do you do, Peggy? Hi. Oh, the, the bunkhouse is uh, over next to the barn. Fine. Thanks again, Mrs. Dayton. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Mm. Who's Mr. Bannister, Mother? Well, he was a friend of your father's. He's going to work for us now as a ranch hand. Maybe he can help me with Traveler. Sally Jane's pony could shake hands, but dumb old Traveler won't learn now. Oh. Well, maybe if you're patient with him, he'll learn too. Well, he's sure being dumb about it. But anyway, he's faster than Sally's pony. <laughs> don't even know what I'm talking about. Well, I'll tell you what you do. You get yourself a short little stick and you put it in your left hand. Then you hold out your right hand and you say, shake hands, traveler. And then you take that stick and you give him a smart rap right behind the right hoof. And you'd be surprised how fast dumb old traveler is going to turn into young, smart traveler. Really? Try it. Thanks, Adam. Hi, Peg. Hello, Adam. How nice of you to call. 
Who's the new man I saw at the bunkhouse? His name is Ward Bannister. He was a friend of Frank's in San Francisco. Oh, a friend of Frank's, huh? Yes. Frank did have some friends. Here. What's he doing here? Oh, he came to give me a $10,000 life insurance policy that Frank had left with him. You'd probably be interested to know that I've already ordered the new fencing and the new roofing. And I've hired a new foreman. What kind of experience has this Mr. Bannister had? Well, he has done a lot of work with cattle. Does that qualify him as a foreman? Dave Wilkins is the new foreman. Mr. Bannister is the new hired hand. Now, if either Dave or I are dissatisfied with his work, the end of the first week, he rides out again. Any more questions? No. Good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some mending to do. Oh, or maybe you'd rather stay and watch. I may have been doing that wrong all this time, too. The reason I came over was, uh, well, if you could possibly be ready, I would take you and Peggy to church and on a picnic tomorrow. Of course we can be ready. If you think you can refrain from criticizing the sermon. I'll do my very best. Good. Sounds like a she-wolf. Many wolves around here? Oh, there's one denned up there in the hills with some pups. Who's this Adam fella? One of the Cartwrights. Mrs. is kind of sweet on him. Kid's crazy about him. Well, except for being made foreman, old lady Luck is sure going to sour on me today. And you better deal me in. She's been sweet as honey to me. One of you fellas lend me some rifle ammunition? Well, there's a whole box of it inside. Uh, help yourself. Why? Well, I thought I'd take a crack at that wolf in the morning. Hey, uh, that sure be a good way to get rid of the Sunday morning do-nothings. Would you mind if we went with you? Oh, sure. Fine. Sermon. Well, just because I spent half the time looking at you doesn't mean I don't know what the sermon was all about. <laughs> uh, the picnic hamper is in the spring house. It won't take Peggy and me more than a few minutes to get changed. And what are you all grinning about? What are you going to call him, Peggy? I'll call him Prince. I've always wanted a puppy called Prince. Adam, uh, this is Ward Bannister, Adam Cartwright. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Cartwright? Laura, you know that's a wolf cub. <laughs> Ward, he kept complaining all last night how the mother kept him awake. So this morning we went out to get her. Wasn't easy getting that little critter out, either. Turn a van as frisky as a kitten. Well, that was a fool thing to do. Oh, well, why was it a fool thing to do, Adam? Well, Laura, the pup is fun now, but when it grows up, it'll be what it is, a wolf. <laughs> You're gonna be gone for a few hours. I suggest that you take the cub back and put him back where you found him. Any way you want him, Miss Cartwright. I don't want him taken back. I want him to stay here. Please, Adam. He's so little and helpless. 
Peggy. He's got to go back sooner or later. It'd be better if you do it now before you really get to like him. But I like him now, and I'm going to keep him. Peggy. I'll go talk to Peggy, ma'am. I don't want to cause any trouble. Yeah. Laura, you're not going to let her keep the pup. It'll grow up to be a dangerous animal. I know, Adam. I know. I don't know how to run a ranch. I don't know who to fire. I don't know who to hire. The fences are falling down and the roof's leaking and, and the stock is unattended. And now I can't even make the right decision about whether my child should have a pet or not. Well, Adam, if I'm so hopeless, why do you bother? Why do you even bother? percent is a very fair return, Mr. Day. You'll find that though money is a hard master, it's a willing servant. You must make your capital work for you, that's... Well, thank you very much for your advice, Mr. Weems. Oh, uh, this is Ward Bannister, my new hand. How do you Mr. do, Mr. Weems. Bannister? Everything all right, Mr. Dayton? Yes, including a nice little lecture on the value of money. Now, I still have some things to do. Have you finished your errand? Yes, ma'am. Oh, would you mind driving me? I may as well do these things while we're in town. Not at all. Where to first? Bannister? Yes. <laughs> Bless my soul, it is. How are you, Ward? Fine, fine. I'd like you to meet Mrs. Dayton. She's my employer. How do you do? Well, a pleasure, Mrs. Dayton. Ward, what are you up to now? I'm a ranch hand. And a very good one. <laughs> Ward was a very good timber cruiser for me some years ago, Mrs. Dayton. The problem was to keep him tied down in one place. <laughs> well, I must hurry along. Nice to see you, Ward. And a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Dayton. As a matter of fact, why can't we have lunch at the hotel? I hate dining alone. Can't feel I'm not particularly dressed for a restaurant. Well, possibly you can convince him. I'll be pushing along to San Francisco in a day or two, and it may be another five years before we meet. You don't have to worry, Ward. The people in the Virginia City Hotel are quite used to men in trail clothes. All right, fine, Miss Camp. Half an hour, then? Fine. He seems like a pleasant man. I suppose the least I could do is get a shave. I'll meet you back here in a half hour, then. I'll meet you at the hotel. At the hotel. Good. I was hoping you'd think to stop by. Where's the girl? Shopping. I'm getting a shave. She wasn't uh, suspicious when you told her that you were a friend of her husband's. From what I gathered from the ranch hands, uh, he didn't talk too much about his trips to San Francisco. <laughs> I can understand why. Oh, there was a lot more pleasure than business. <laughs> Who was she talking to at the bank? The president. Seemed to me to be a careful old codger. Uh, that's probably who she'll be checking with. I'm rather glad I was careful to pick something he'd approve. And what would that be? <laughs> the San Francisco Monterey Railroad. San Francisco Monterey? I never heard of it. <laughs> Neither had anyone else until two months ago. It's Jay Banyan's promotion. For old time's sake and a cut of the proceeds, he let me in on it. <laughs> Think old Weems will go for this? Oh, I'm sure of it. Jay's been clever about this one. Right-of-way surveys, negotiations for land. <laughs> Banker Weems has probably read all about it in the financial news. But we've got to be quick. What's the next step? Just follow my lead. Here's to our pigeon, who's about ready to be plucked. <laughs>
I just want to say one thing, Laura. What? I'm sorry. I hadn't realized what a pleasure it was calling on you, knowing that I was welcome. Well, the running D's always welcome calls from neighbors. That's not exactly what I meant. Would you have lunch with me today? I've been an idiot, and I realize it. I hadn't guessed the Cartwright men would confess to a thing like that. Well, it takes time. But it sinks in. I already have a luncheon engagement today, Adam. I'm sorry. I really am. But I don't have any plans for the evening. Good. I'll see you tonight. <laughs> we were a little younger in those days, I guess. At least I was. You haven't aged. Uh, uh, do you mind, Mrs. Dayton? No, not at all. Ward, no, no. have a cigar. No, thanks. <laughs> Ward, now, you occasionally showed a knack for making money in the past. Did you ever hang on to any of it? Just long enough to get me to the card table, Mr. Canfield. Too bad. I agree. Well, why do you ask? Well, I'm involved in a most unusual enterprise in San Francisco. The San Francisco Monterey Railroad. The shares are $100 apiece, which is a sum, of course, but the value should well double itself within a very few months. Well, if Mrs. Dayton will advance me three months' salary, uh, I might just be able to handle one share. <laughs> <laughs> Don't treat it lightly, my friend. This is a most unusual opportunity. Did you say the stock would double its value in a few months? Well, I should say there's very little chance of it doing otherwise with the important people behind it. Why do you ask? Mr. Canfield, I uh, might be interested in an investment. Well, good. <laughs> a couple of shares will give you the satisfaction of having been part of an important contribution to the West. Now then, Ward... Uh, no, I would be interested in uh, more than a couple of shares. Uh, could I get as many as 80? <laughs> but that would be uh, $8,000, my dear young lady. Yes, I know. I assume you have a financial advisor. A financial advisor? Well, I suppose Mr. Weems at the bank could help me. <laughs> well, then. Why don't you just glance through this, Mrs. Dayton? And then, if you're still interested, we'll call on Mr. Weems. All right. <laughs> Peggy, maybe we should let Prince go. Well, he doesn't seem to be very happy. But he shouldn't have been spanked for killing those chickens, Mother. Mm. He'll get over it. I suppose he shouldn't have been. After all, it's the nature of a wolf to kill chickens, isn't it? But he will get over it. I know he will. Well, let's hope so. Now, you go get ready for bed. I'll be in a few minutes. Yes, Mother. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. I had just this moment decided to go and see if you're in the bunkhouse. Oh, have you got a chore you'd like me to attend to, maybe? Oh, no. Uh, your friend, Mr. Canfield. Uh, have his ventures always been successful? His ventures have been very successful. Mr. Canfield's a very clever man. He seems to be. Can't make up your mind whether or not to invest, right? Well, $8,000 is a considerable sum of money. Wish I had it. Mr. Canfield's given me several opportunities, but I uh, just never can handle them. It sounds like wonderful investment. You don't have too much time to make up your mind, do you? Remember, uh, Mr. Canfield's got to leave sometime tomorrow. Oh, good night, ma'am. Uh, Ward, uh, I called Dave Wilkins in to, uh, to compliment him on the wonderful job he's been doing, and 
Well, he said it was your doing. Well, that was mighty nice of him. You do like the life here, don't you? Oh, yes, I like it here very much. Oh, Dave told me another thing. He doesn't really like the responsibility of being the foreman. Uh, he would stay on those a hand. Well, now, if you would be interested in taking over his job... Well, I don't think I could do that, no. Oh, yes, you could. You're, you're just being modest. I have been told by experts that I need a man to run this ranch. Well, maybe that could be you. We might work out some sort of a share arrangement. Now, you, you think about it, Ward. Ma'am. Yes? You really want me to stay on here, huh? Yes. <laughs> I don't know how to say this. I'm... Well, I'm not too much at giving people advice. Well, that's a refreshing change. I've been thinking it's a, it's a good thing to invest in your own property. And that way you can see it working for you. You mean the $8,000 I might invest with Mr. Canfield? Well, uh, Dave and the boys and I were talking in the bunkhouse, and we figured that, well, the running D can handle three times the herd you have. You got a thousand acres of timber up north that hasn't even seen an axe. Now, if you invest your money in cattle and equipment for lumbering, you... That sounds wonderful. But if I invest the money with Mr. Canfield, I can double it in hardly any time at all. Then think of all the things we can do for the ranch. Now, that's another thing I want to talk to you about. Oh, it's so nice to have someone around who treats me in a as an adult, and instead of picking on me all the time. I'm so glad you came along, Ward. Come on. Who is it? Just somebody who carried your packages this afternoon. Hello. I'm sorry I'm late. Well, that's all right. I, I was reading. I hadn't even noticed the time. Uh, there's some coffee in the back of the stove. You want some? Mm -hmm. It will, uh, I think, help keep me alert and uh, minding my manners. I found a nice spot for the picnic, Sunday. Mountain glade, waterfall. I think only the Indians know where it is. That sounds like fun. Think Peggy would like to come along? I hope so. Oh, you were right about that wolf cub, Adam. It is becoming a problem. It would be nice to keep her mind off it. Now, let's see now. How does my tab stand with this cribbage tournament? I believe you owe me $745,000. Yeah, you know, and I have a feeling that I'm going to even it up tonight in one fell swoop. I'm sorry, Adam. You probably could, but I'm afraid I couldn't keep my mind on the game. You know that luncheon I had today? Well, I met a man named James Canfield. Uh, he's offered me a very attractive investment opportunity. Oh, what kind? The San Francisco Monterey Railroad. Canfield? Local man? Oh, no, he's a friend of Ward Bannister's. He just happened to be in town from San Francisco. How much are you intending to invest? $8,000. <laughs> oh, he's promised to double it in a few months. It's hard to resist, isn't it? What do you know about Mr. Canfield? I told you he's a friend of Ward Bannister's. Look, Laura, Bannister is a stranger that rode into this town just a couple of months ago. He is a very hardworking man and a nice one. Maybe he is. But that isn't enough reason to put a lot of money into an investment on the word of a friend of his that just happened to be passing through town. I've discussed this thoroughly with Mr. Weems. He is very impressed. Well, Mr. Weems is a very capable small-town banker. But I doubt very seriously if he knows too much about high finance. Or Bannister's and Mr. Canfield, for that matter. Mr. Weems has sent a telegram to the president of the railroad asking him if Mr. Canfield represented him. He won't let me make a move until he gets a confirming wire. And Mr. Canfield has to leave town soon, hmm? Yes. Tomorrow, as a matter of fact. 
Why? Let's play some cribbage, huh? in a messy situation with Laura. She's investing in this railroad. Big one. I don't know, the mood she's in, I don't seem to be able to get very far in discussing it with her. Well, you think it's a bad investment? Depends on who the other investors are, how much stock has been sold, or if they have any freight orders. She hasn't even bothered to check into these things. Can't you? Well, I intend to. I... Uh, Thought I'd wire our broker in Frisco tomorrow morning and uh, let him check these things out. But the <laughs> trouble is, if we think it's a poor investment and I persuade her to pull out of it and it turns out to be a good investment, well, I'm going to be as welcome at the running D as an outbreak of cholera. Is it important to you to be welcome at the running D? Well, it is uh, now more than it was a few weeks ago, yeah. Al, you getting the answer to that telegram we sent off this morning? No answer yet, Adam. I'll be over at the hotel having lunch. When it comes in, get it over to me right away, will you? Uh, sure will. You know, it's a funny thing. Mr. Weems, the banker, got a telegram from San Francisco today about that fellow Canfield. Said he was empowered to act for the railway. For a stranger, he sure is popular. Yeah, he sure is. Yeah, he won't be here for long, though. Mr. Weems tells me he's taking the stage back to San Francisco today. Thanks, Al. What are you doing here? I want to talk to you. You're not supposed to be seen with me again until after I've gotten the money. That's what I want to talk to you about. Mrs. Dayton came into town this morning. Did she give you a check to invest? Oh, she certainly did. We plucked our little pigeon for $8,000. Jim, will you do me a favor and forget all about it? I don't want to take her for any money. <laughs> what kind of nonsense is that? <laughs> if every pigeon were as easy as this one has been, I'd be a millionaire today. <laughs> I'll be at that bank in Carson City when the doors open tomorrow morning and you can have your $4,000. Don't cash that check, Jim. <laughs> You're gone on the girl. Don't cash the check. Aren't you forgetting that this is my little deal, Ward? When I picked you up, you couldn't buy your way into a penny ante game. Jim, will you give me the check? I'll hold on to it for a while, and then I'll say you sent it to me because you found out the railroad was in trouble or something. Anything. But you'll get your share, I promise you. How? Oh. You've never seen a thousand dollars in one lump in your life, let alone this much. Now, run along, will you? I want to get some rest.
Here it is, Adam. Just a minute to come in. Thanks. In San Francisco, Monterey Railroad, and it's on the exchange. Investigation showed Canfield, Ailey, Scombe, Ailey's car. Confidence, man. <laughs> Present whereabouts unknown regards to fact. Any answer, Adam? What well, time the next stage for San Francisco leaves? Well, not for about half an hour. Was Canfield already checked out? Well, there's only one way to find out. I'm sure you'll feel better now that you've let Prince go, don't you? I guess so, Mother. Can I see Traveler for a while? Oh, well, just for a little while. Then when you come in, I'll read you a story. Dave told me that you'd been gone most of the day. I, I thought maybe you'd changed your mind about staying on here. I did change my mind, but not about that. What do you mean? Well, this is the check I gave Mr. Canfield this morning. I saw Canfield after you agreed to make the deal with him. And, well, we had a long talk. And uh, well, he finally admitted that there was too much risk in that sort of investment. More risk than I want you to take. There's something more I want to talk to you about, Laura. What is it, Ward? I found something here I've been looking for for years. Something I never thought would be possible for me again. Well, I think that's wonderful. I'm very happy for you. Oh, marry me, Laura. Please marry me. Marry you? In no time at all, we can have the running D in real fine shape. Ward! Like I don't understand you. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about. Don't you remember what you said last night? I wasn't talking about getting married. What was it? You said that this this ranch needed a man and that, that, that I could be him. What did you mean by that? That I admired you, that, that you might run the ranch from me. Run the ranch? That's all. That's all that I missed. That's all! The times we spent together, all those weeks, the talks we had about the ranch, what we were going to do with it, was all just meant for nothing? No, no, we were going to do it on shares for you. Shares? Shares? No, what? no, it was more than that, Lori. It was more than that. <laughs> I had to get carried away like a like a punk kid in his first poker game. <laughs> Warden can't feel the partners in a scheme to rob you of the money with that phony railroad stock. I even risked my neck to get you that money back. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what comes of dreaming. Let's go, Warden. Ward, I'm sorry. Yeah. So am I.
I've got to go away, Peggy. I'm sorry about that little wolf pup. We let him go this afternoon. That's where we've been. I guess you can never change animals from what they're meant to be. That sometimes happens with people, too, Peggy. Be a good girl now, huh? Heading up for the rocks above the old lumber road. Hey, you see what I see? If he gets in that brush, we've lost him for sure. Look, I'll circle around and try to cut him off. You keep on his trail. Right. sweetheart the doctor says there's a very good chance you'll see again you mean that papa you're not lying to me yeah, he's not lying to you sis you're gonna be just fine but it's gonna take a while oh papa how are we gonna manage you can't afford to put me into a hospital we're staying with the cartwrights they're gonna foot all the bills can they afford it from what I've seen of the size of their spread, they can afford almost anything. And they owe it to you. It's the least they can do for what they've taken away from you. And Joseph, will you settle down? You're acting as if it were your first day out instead of hers. I'm sorry, Pa. That I've been trying to see her ever since the accident. I just don't understand why her father won't let me go near her. Well, I think his concern is natural. I just want to tell her how sorry I am. I think you'll have your chance right now. Papa, I'm scared. Don't be afraid. We'll hold you. Come on. There it is. That's fine. Fine. Oh, good morning. Good morning. 
One more. Well. Well, good morning, good morning. How's our lovely young patient this morning? Who's that? I'm Ben Cartwright. Uh, she's feeling quite chipper. This is the first day without the bandages. It feels good to get out of that room for a change. I'm sure it does. Papa, could I maybe get a little fresh air? Sure. I, I was hoping she might like something like that. Who's that? It's, uh, it's little Joe, Tessa. Look, I, I thought you might like a little ride. I've got the carriage outside. I got the horse all hitched. What's wrong, car, right? You trying to ease out from under your guilty conscience? Lon, that's no way to talk. You shouldn't turn the back of your hand to a generous offer. If little Joe would like to take her for a ride, I think that would be nice if Tessa would enjoy it. Oh, I'd enjoy anything that would take me out into the fresh air for a while, Papa. So we better get started then. There's an awful lot of the Ponderosa to see. Uh, well, Tessa. Uh... I'll see you later, Papa. Enjoy yourself. Oh. We've been riding for quite a while. You want to get out and stretch your legs a bit? Oh, I'd like that. Over here, would you like to sit down? Yes, I would. This way. Well, it's right, right oh. behind you. Yes, I found it. One of my favorite spots. Come here and fish when I was a kid. It feels very pretty. Tell me what it looks like. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of trees around. Some pretty big trees. And uh, well, there's a slope over there with some cattle on it. Not very many of them. And. Uh, a little stream running by. There's a lot of birds and ducks. There's a blue jay in this tree right here. It sounds beautiful. Tessa, I'm so sorry. If I could give you my eyes, I would. It wasn't your fault. It was an accident. It was my fault that it happened. No, don't blame yourself. Let's talk about something else. I, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Tell me about yourself. Have you lived here all your life? Yeah, I was born here. I envy you. I've been on the move all my life. My pa doesn't seem to stay in one spot very long. What does your father do? Oh, a little bit of everything. You might say that Pa's been looking for that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Did he ever find it? Not yet. I suppose he will. He, he doesn't give up too easily. Oh, I'm starting to get a little cold. Oh. Well, we better be getting back then. I don't want to keep you out too long the first day. Okay. Tessa, I'll cut that for you. Oh, thank you. You're getting too fast for me, little Joe. Doesn't a father have any prerogative in taking care of his daughter? It's my pleasure. Fine. 
Now, there's something that I've been wanting to say to all of you. You Cartwrights have been awfully good to us. I don't know what would have happened to us if you hadn't taken us in. That was the least we could do. Tessa, the meat's on the left and vegetables are on the right. Yeah. And if I've been short-tempered and mean these past few days, why, uh, it isn't because of what happened to Tessa there. It's... Well, we've had some plans, and those plans are pretty well gone now. What plans? A job out in California. Paid well, too, but I... I had to be there by a certain time, and the time's passed now. Are you sure it's too late now? Quite sure. But that really isn't very important. What is important is the uh, young man that was waiting for Tessa. Met him out in Missouri about a year ago. He was on his way to California. He was going to make his fortune. Said he'd send for Tessa, and he did a couple of months ago. Papa... Oh, it's true. The engagement is off, Tessa. It seems he uh, doesn't want to marry a blind woman. You comfortable? Pa? Pa, what's, what's all that about down there? What do you mean? I mean, all those lies you were telling at dinner, all that talk about a job for you and a fiancé for me, I, I don't understand. Why were you lying like that? Well, now, were they really such terrible lies? Maybe one day there will be a job for me and a fiancé for you. Who knows? Papa, you're not trying to make the Cartwrights feel even more guilty, are you? To make them look after us even better than they do now? Guilty? Tessa, I, I, I'm doing this for you and Lon. Ever since you were little, I promised you that one day we'd have something. Well, that day has come. We've, we've found the end of the rainbow, and it, it has a name. Cartwright. Papa, the... They're good, decent people. You can't take advantage of them that way. No one's trying to take advantage of them. Aren't you forgetting that it was little Joe's bullet that blinded you? Whatever the, the Cartwrights are doing for us, they owe us. Well, little Joe's a nice boy. I can't see him, but I can feel what he's going through. And it was an accident. Is uh, little Joe beginning to mean something to you? No. I just don't feel the need to hurt him anymore. No one wants to hurt him. And after all, we may be doing him some good. After all, knowing a wonderful girl like you shouldn't be a hardship on any man. Now, you try to get some rest, huh? I'll lick it on you after a bit. Do you want to go for a walk or do you want to sit around here? Oh, I think I'd like to sit for a while. Okay. Here, when you sit down, it's a rocker. Oh, thank you. Okay. I don't know what I'd do without my eyes. Oh. I like being your eyes, Tessa. Tessa, the fellow in California, the one you were engaged to, I suppose you loved him very much. Why do you ask? I don't know. You just... Strike me as the kind of girl who'd have to love a man very much to marry him. Yes, I'm that kind of girl. Have you been able to forget him at all? Isn't that the best way? 
Yeah, I guess so. Guess I suppose a man came along someday and, and asked you to marry him. How would you feel about it? Well, that would depend on why he wanted to marry me, Joe. Because of my blindness, he might mistake love for pity, and... Well, I just don't think that would be a very sound basis for marriage. No, I guess not. A woman has pride. She, she wants a man to love her for herself alone, not... because he feels sorry for her. You talk as though you don't believe a man could love you just for yourself alone. I don't know. Would you take me in now? I'm, I'm getting kind of tired. If that's what you want. talk to you. <laughs> You've got to read this book, Joe. Hey, Paul, it's kind of important. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. So involved. Yeah. Well, uh, what would you say if, uh, if I told you I was going to ask Tessa to marry me? Well, she's a, she's a fine girl, Joseph. I think that any man would be Proud to call her his wife. Good. What about, uh, what about Tessa? What does she feel? I, I think she cares for me a lot. Maybe as much as I care for her. Mm. Of course, uh, there's quite a difference between caring for a person and, uh, and loving them. <laughs> Don't you see? It, it's a perfect answer for all of her problems. Now, who can take better care of her for the rest of her life than a husband? Joe. Joe, you make me feel real good. You have a sense of responsibility. That's good. But I... I don't want to... Make a martyr of yourself because of an unfortunate... Pa, there is no martyrdom involved. It would be a good marriage. An unfortunate accident, Joe. Her blindness is my problem. Now, Joe, you have a life of your own to live. Now, Pa, I want you to get used to the idea because I'm going to ask Tessa to marry me. Hi, Mr. Caldwell. Hello, Joe. Thought I'd come a little early, see if Tessa wanted to go for a ride. Well, she's already gone riding with her brother. Got me worried. They should have been back hours ago. Which trail they take? Well, they went off the North Ridge there. I'll find you. You're all right, just keep coming. Lord! Oh, honey, I'm sorry, I didn't mean for you to get hurt, but I can't watch you every minute. Okay, mount up. No! Tessa, we gotta get back to the ranch now. You can't walk all that way. No, Lon, I'm scared, I don't want to. Oh, come on, mount up. What, do you expect me to be your nursemaid the rest of your life? I'm your brother, not your husband. <laughs> You ever hurt Tessa again, and I'll kill you. Tessa, you all right? Oh, yes, Joe, I'm all right. You're the one blinded her. Now you take care of her. You know, 
one thing your brother said made sense. You need a husband to take care of you the way she'd be taken care of. Who'd want to marry a blind girl? I would if you'd have me. Tessa, I would if you'd have me. Mr. Cartwright? Oh, yes, Tessa, here I am. Uh, could I speak to you for a moment, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, of course. Uh, why don't you sit down over here? There's the chair right behind you now. Uh, would you like some coffee? No, thank you. Mr. Cartwright. Yes, dear. Little Joe asked me to marry him today. Did he tell you? Yes, yes, he did tell me. He also told me that you... Uh, you refused to give him an answer. Why? Oh, Mr. Cartwright, if I could just look into little Joe's eyes right this minute, I... Well, if I could see that there was love there, and not just pity and guilt... I'd say yes so fast it would make your head spin. He means so much? Oh, yes. But I can't see what's in his eyes. That's why I've come to you. You're his father, and you know him better than anyone else. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, please tell me what to do. Well, that's... Uh... It's very difficult. I, I don't... I don't think anyone can... tell you what to do. But I think that... if two people... love each other... I mean... truly... deeply... love each other... Well, then nothing else matters... does it? Not even, not even blindness. Because there's so many other things that they can share together. But how can I be sure? Where can I find the answer? In your heart, Tessa. In your heart. If I should say yes, if we should get married, you won't hate me. You won't think I'm marrying little Joe just because I need him. No, Tessa. I don't think you're that kind of girl. I don't think you're the kind of girl who'd marry anyone for selfish reasons. Papa? Over here. Papa, where's little Joe? Oh, they all had to go into town on business. They'll be right back. Say, you better hurry up and get some breakfast before it gets cold. I'll be right there. Want me to be. 
Oh, Bob, I can't wait till he gets back. Tessa, are you sure this is the right way? Oh, Papa, he's got to know. He's got to know as soon as possible. Don't you see? He, he won't feel guilty anymore. And, and I'll be able to see what's in his eyes. Well, maybe it isn't all that easy. What are you getting at? Well, suppose that little Joe doesn't love you the way that you think that he ought. Suppose... There is a small element of pity and, and, and guilt in the way he feels about you. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't some love, and I'm not saying that this love doesn't grow every day that you two are together, but has it grown strong enough? Maybe if you blurt out the truth now, why, this whole thing will be over. It'll be, it'll be finished. Papa, he loves me, and the fact that I can see again will only make him love me more. Of course. But why take unnecessary chances? Wait until after you're married and then tell him, and that way no harm will come to anyone. Pa's right. What's so terrible about pretending you're blind a little longer? Of course, and, 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 and women have been setting their caps for men down through the ages, and, and the intelligent thing to do is, uh, is to win the man first and then tell him the truth. Papa, it's because I love little Joe that I owe him the truth. Don't you understand? I can see again. I don't need to marry little Joe anymore unless he really loves me. And what about Lon and me? Don't you care what happens to us one little bit? Papa, you and Lon... Do you realize what's in store for us if we have to leave here now? No money, no jobs, nothing. Papa... Tessa... I'm 53 years old. All my life, I've been waiting for something good to happen to me. All my life, I've been tending to you and to Lon. Don't take this chance away from me. Don't, don't take it away from all of us. Papa, what are you asking me to do? He's asking you not to turn on your own flesh and blood. I don't want to turn against you. Just tell me what you want me to do. I want you to play blind until after you're married to little Joe. Do it for me. Do it for Lon. You, you owe it to us. I can't do that. Tessie. Papa, I can't. It's our last can't chance do that. to get anything. Papa. Oh, another thing. I think tomorrow morning we go up to the north section and see how many camps have been dropped. Tessa, what's the matter? You look upset. Tessa, what's wrong? Nothing's happened, little Joe. I guess I'm just tired of being blind. Take me upstairs, Papa. Tessa? Come on, what's the matter? You've been avoiding me the past few days. I don't know. Nothing's the matter. Come on, now, there is something the matter. You're just not the same girl anymore. I wish I knew what kind of girl I really am. I know what kind of girl you are. I asked you a question a week ago, and I'm still waiting for an answer. Joe, please. Tessa, I want to marry you. Oh, Joe, please. Tessa, I want to marry you. I want to marry you now, and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Are you sure that's what you really want? Yes, I'm sure. It's what I want more than anything else in the world. Tessa, please say yes. All right. 
I'll marry you. Pa? Hey, Pa? He must be in the barn. I'll go get him. You be all right? Yeah, fine. Just went upstairs, Joe. Joseph, it's wonderful. She already told you about us getting married. Well, no. Pa, I finally convinced her. Pa, I'm gonna fill her life with so much love that her blindness won't matter. I'll be her eyes for the rest of her life. Well, come on, aren't you gonna congratulate me? Oh, of course. I... Of course. You don't look too happy about it. Well, she's a... She's a remarkable girl, Joseph. Of course she is. She couldn't be any more right for me, Pa. Joe, are you, are you sure? Are you absolutely sure about her? I know my own mind. Of course you do. I, I don't suppose you've set the date yet. No, the sooner the better. Just give us enough time to invite some friends and neighbors. Don't you think it might be an idea? After all, you don't know each other that well. Perhaps if you, if you waited a bit, we know each other well enough. Yes, but what do you what do you think of the idea? Maybe, maybe we should take her to San Francisco and have a have a doctor examine her eyes. Pa, uh, I'm I'm not kidding myself about her. She's blind, and I made her that way. I know, but they're always developing new techniques. I don't want to hurt her any more than I have already. I love her the way she is. Come on, Pa, don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Joseph, I... You're my son, and... I just want the best for you. The very best. And stop worrying. I think I got the best. I know I got the best, Pa. Hey, better go upstairs and see her. Paul, little Joe find you? Hmm? Little Joe find you? Yes, he found me. He told you about the wedding, huh? Yes. Paul, you don't you don't seem very happy about it. You uh, you ain't worried just because Tessa's blind, are you? Oh, she isn't blind. She what? I said she isn't blind. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. A little while ago when little Joe was looking for me, I went to the back way. And there she was in front of that mirror in the living room, primping. And then she ran up those stairs like the wind. She can see better than you or me. Oh, that, that only makes sense. I know it doesn't. What? You mean she's just been playing a game with us? I don't know. I just don't know. You want to tell little Joe? Of course, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. I'll tell you something. I like that girl. I think she likes little Joe enough. Maybe she even loves little Joe enough to tell him the truth about herself before this goes much further. What if she don't? We're gonna have to give it that chance. Morning, Tessa. Good morning. Oh, the flowers, they... 
smell beautiful. Yeah, the place is really getting gussied up. It's gonna look beautiful for the wedding. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just straightening things up a little bit. Joe, I have some good news for you. Oh, yeah? What's that? I think my eyesight is beginning to come back to me. What? It's just been in the last couple of days. I, But I, I can see a little bit of light. Now, but I had to be sure before I said anything to you. Tessa, can you see me? No, no not clearly, but... I, I know I will. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God you're going to see again. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, God. Now you won't have to feel guilty anymore. I mean... Now you, you don't have to marry me if you don't want to. What do you mean? Perfect chance for you to back out. Oh, don't say that, Tessa. Please don't say that. I asked you to marry me, and I meant it. Are you sure, Joe? Are you very sure? I'm sure. Of course I am. Yes? May a future father-in-law come in? Certainly. Isn't she a dream, Mr. Cartwright? Well, she certainly is. You done a beautiful job, Mrs. Partridge. Of course, you had a, a beautiful subject to work with. Oh. Oh, Mrs. Partridge, uh, may I have a moment alone with Tessa? Why, sure. Thank you. Well, I, uh, I know it's a uh, father's prerogative to have a few moments with his daughter at a time like this, but is it also a uh, father-in-law's? <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, actually, I... I came to wish you everything well. And to tell you what a wonderful girl I think you really are. That's very kind of you, Mr. Cartwright. Do you think I deserve all that? Yes, I'm sure. You know, all through the years, I prayed that when one of my sons was ready to marry, he'd choose a young woman who was worthy, who loved him deeply, and who knew that he loved her and would always have his best interests at heart. And you think I'm that kind of girl? I know you are. Because, you see, I think you love and respect little Joe enough so that you'd always do what's best for him, what's right for him, what's right for both of you, no matter what the cost. Bless you, Tessa. Mr. Cartwright? Yes. Nothing. It was nothing. Time like this? It's, it's just my nerves, Papa. It's just 
just my nerves. Well, now, they're all waiting for you. You ready? Yes, I'm, I'm ready. I'll get my bouquet, Papa. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here together in the sight of God and the presence of this company to join this man and this woman in holy wedlock. Joseph Cartwright, do you take this woman, Tessa Caldwell, for your lawful wedded wife, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love, honor, and cherish her for as long as you both shall live? I do. Tessa Caldwell, do you take this man, Joseph Cartwright, for your lawful wedded husband, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love, honor, and obey him for as long as you both shall live? I can't, Papa. It's I just all right. can't. It's all right. I oh, guess God. I've known all along I was asking you to do the wrong thing. <laughs> I See. Joe, go away. Yes, now look at me. You can see. Yes, I've been able to for days. Well, then why didn't you tell me? My papa was afraid that you'd back out of the marriage if you knew. That's why he made up that story about the man who was waiting for me in California. Oh, don't you see, Joe? We've been using you, taking advantage of your guilt. You told me yesterday you were getting your sight back. Why didn't you tell me the whole truth then? Why did you wait till the ceremony? I guess because I didn't want to disappoint Papa. Mainly because I... I didn't want to face the truth about us. And what is the truth? That your feeling of love for me was really guilt. And that my feeling of love for you was really fear of, of being alone in the darkness. Well, then you, you don't love me, not really. Not enough for marriage, Joe. Neither of us do. I have been so afraid to say anything. I I didn't want to hurt you anymore. I know. That's why I had the courage to do what I did. You know, my pa was right about you. you you're a very remarkable girl. <laughs> and you Cartwrights are 
remarkable family. I kind of hate to face the truth. Me too. Well, you see, better get on until the guests take and I'll go home. Yes. friend of mine in San Francisco. Now, if you were to deliver this to him personally, I think he might be able to find a job for your father and your brother. You mean you're willing to help us after what we tried to do to you? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> your heart wasn't in it. Anyway, I told you, you're just not that kind of girl. Well, you're on your way. Yep. No, I want to tell you something. You are the prettiest girl that I ever almost married. <laughs> and you're the handsomest man. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Well, Mr. Kyright, thank you for your many kindnesses, even though it didn't uh, turn out to be a pot of gold. <laughs> oh, Papa, any pots of gold from now on will be made by our own hands. That's a depressing thing to learn at my age. But we'll try. <laughs> Goodbye, Ben. Marcus, I'm glad everything turned out well. Thank you. Bye, Tessa. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.